पंद्रह सौ प्री लोडेड गानो वाला की पैड फोन धमाकेदार साउंड के साथ कारवा मोबाइल हाई दिस इज उत्कर्ष उत्कर्ष पटेल एंड वेलकम टू अर्ल्ड ऑफ स्टोरीज स्टोरीज फ्रॉम मिथोलॉजी एपिक्स लेजेंड्स एंड फोक टेल्स टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू टेल यू एन इंटरेस्टिंग स्टोरी ऑफ टेंटिलस एंड इज डॉटर नायोबी बोथ दीज कैरेक्टर्स आर इम्पॉर्टेंट फ्रॉम टू वेरी डिफरेंट परस्पेक्टिव विच वी विल अराइव एट at the end of the story let's start with tantalus tantalus was a mortal son of zeus the king of greek gods but unlike other mortals was a favorite with both the gods and zeus tantalus was probably the only mortal who was allowed to dine with the gods especially dinner for the gods only kind however such love was not quite reciprocated by tantalus he had the habit of listening to the divine secrets of the gods and pass it down to the humans more as a boast to prove his divine proximity a few times he even tried to steal the ambrosia that is the divine drink of the gods to share it with the mortals once one of the gods stole zeus's golden pet dog and gave it to tantalus to hide it later When the god came to ask for it, Tantalus claimed ignorance and said he never was given such a dog. It took Zeus's intervention who sent his messenger to find the dog. Such acts of misconduct were occasionally pardoned as he was the favorite and thus Tantalus never took the gods seriously. Once to prove the gullibility and the foolishness of the gods, Tantalus invited them for dinner to his castle he then cut his son pelops to pieces and made a stew out of it and served it to the gods none of the gods had quite had the stew except for demeter demeter was the goddess of fertility demeter had unmindfully chewed into what turned out to be the shoulder of pelops she was not in a proper frame of mind as she was mourning for her daughter Persephone who had been kidnapped when she realized what had happened she alerted all the gods who were now furious zeus decided to punish him severely for this act of trying to make cannibals out of the gods as a punishment he was sent to tartarus the lowest region of the underworld there he was chained in a lake and made to stand under a tree full of ripe and juicy fruits however whenever he tried to pluck a fruit the fruit would move away from him and whenever he tried to drink water from the lake it would recede thus depriving him of all the nourishments this gives us the word tantalize meaning to tease someone with the sight or promise of something that they cannot have to tease him further sometimes the waters of the lake would rise up to his chin but the moment he tried to drink the waters would recede and all he would find was mud all over him if he tried to take the waters in his hands to drink it would flow off his hands by the time it reached his mouth this left tantalus eternally frustrated some versions of the myth say that zeus punished him further by hanging a stone over him which was always threatening to fall on him and he was eternally trying to dodge the same the gods were so disappointed with him that the entire family and the descendants of tantalus were cursed to end in tragedy however the gods managed to resurrect his son pelops with an ivory shoulder since demeter had taken a bite of the shoulder pelops goes on to live a long life and was probably the only one who escaped the wrath of the gods in tantalus's family many scholars were of the opinion that tantalus was probably a historical figure possibly the ruler of a city called tantalus or of a city by the name of syphilis near the present day mount syphilis many archaeological remains have associations with the house of tantalus and his children What is of importance is the crime and punishment. Tantalus's crime seems to be less of killing his son than of making the gods cannibals. In the ancient times, killing one's blood-related 
was a grave crime. But the focus in this myth has been more of God's deception. The gods were angry because they were misled with an ulterior motive of trying to prove that the gods were not all that intelligent as they seemed to be. Another way to look at it is that message was being given to people that gods did not like human sacrifice and the society at large should never resort to cannibalism. The punishment of depriving Tantalus of all food and drink eternally brings out the severity of the punishment by the gods and that too to the favorite of the gods. This Greek myth sends a loud message that no matter how close one is to the gods, there is no messing around with them. One cannot take them for granted and above all, they seek reverence and not ridicule. If one transgresses the lines drawn, one can face severe punishment and not just the concerned person, but his sons and other family members. The entire family and his descendants have faced tragic deaths and this by itself is a very important lesson in this particular myth. As we have seen, Tantalus suffers heavily in the hands of the gods and as mentioned earlier, his family members are also not spared. Niobe was a daughter of Tantalus. While all the children of Tantalus faced wrath of the gods, Niobe was no exception. But before we move on to Niobe, an important mythical figure, let us briefly refer to Broteus, who was another son of Tantalus. Broteus had once insulted the goddess Artemis, a folly repeated by the sister later on, as we will see, by refusing to honor her. And so Proteus was punished by turning him insane. In his insanity, he thought he was indestructible to the flames of fire and to prove it, he jumped into the fire. However, he was consumed by the fire and that's the end of it. His arrogance to the gods was his nemesis, a fate that was similar to that of his father, Tantalus. Niobe was the daughter of Tantalus. She got married to Amphion, the ruler of Thebes. Amphion incidentally played the lyre so well that his music could sway the trees and move stones. It is said that the walls of Thebes were rebuilt by his magical musical. Niobe had seven handsome sons and seven beautiful daughters. The number of children differs from text to text, but at the moment we will go with seven sons and seven daughters. Collectively, they were referred to as Niobids. It is said that Niobe too had the genetic fault of hubris or excessive pride and arrogance that she had inherited from her father. In Thebes, during the annual festival of honoring Leto, a goddess, and her offsprings, Niobe is supposed to have ridiculed Leto. Dressed in a royal finery, she chastised people for worshipping Leto and her children. She felt that it made no sense in worshipping those who could not be seen. She belonged to the house of Tantalus, the one who dined with the gods. She was the queen of Thebes and the wife of Amphion who had built the beautiful city. Most importantly, she was the mother of seven sons and seven daughters. Whereas Leto had only one son and a daughter, Apollo and Artemis, sometimes also referred to as Diana. This brazen display of arrogance hurt Leto so much that she complained to her children, Apollo and Artemis about this. Apollo shot at Niobe's sons and Artemis killed all her daughters, leaving her without any children, the very objects of her pride. Amphion killed himself when he saw the sight of his 14 dead children. It is said that the dead bodies lay in a pool of blood for nine days and later the gods buried them. A violent whirlwind later took Niobe from Thebes and dropped her at Mount Syphilis, where she's supposed to be shedding tears till date. The weeping rock in Mount Syphilis is supposed to be Niobe, which resembles a mourning woman. The rock is always wet. 
which is why it is called the weeping rock. Geographers and mythologists have found many features on the rock which resembles a face of a sad woman. From a distance, one can see the resemblance to the long hair, eyes and nose, etc. The spot today is a major tourist attraction, a stone which is always wet. This is an interesting myth where a very loud message is being given. First, that the follies of parents can have repercussions right down to their children and so it is advisable to follow the path of righteousness, not just for one's own self, but also for the children, as we have seen in the case of Tantalus and his children. Second, pride and arrogance is always the cause of downfall. Niobe was extremely proud of her background, her husband and her children, needless to say, that none of which came to her aid. Her pride was reduced to a pile of dead bodies and herself a rock. Finally, it is good to learn from the lessons that have been laid down before you. Niobe had seen her father's predicament and ought to have known the outcome of going against the gods. But she too had the streak of hubris in her which led her to a worse state than her father and brother Brotis. To conclude, the element niobium was named after Niobe and in the periodic table finds a place right under the element tantalum, again named after Tantalus, Niobe's father. In the earlier days, a number of elements were named after Tantalus's children, like Pelobium, Dianium, Ilmenium. However, by the time the periodic table was finalized in 1950, only Niobium survived, while the others might have been rechristened. Is this a case of another tragedy inflicted on Tantalus's children by the modern day scientists? If you found this story interesting or tantalizing and would like to hear more of such stories which have a bearing in our modern times, then do come back for more. Till then, let me listen to my favorite song and you listen to yours on Saregama Karma. Thank you. Kehta hai man Apna milan Dunia Oh, no.